Congressional leaders have announced a spending agreement. It's a key step to avoid a partial government shutdown in less than two weeks. The $1.6 trillion framework includes nearly $900 billion for defense and more than $770 billion for non-defense spending. Congress needs to approve it by January 19th, though. That's the first of two shutdown deadlines. So for more on this, I want to bring in CBS News Congressional Correspondent Nicole Killian. Nicole, it's good to see you. Uh, really appreciate you getting up super early for the 7 o'clock show. And now you're there uh, in the building to walk us through the framework agreement. So they've agreed upon just on just how much money they're willing to spend. Exactly. Uh, what's called a top line spending or a top line number. And so that top line number that you laid out, 1.66 trillion, uh, really the initial top line was 1.59 trillion, which pretty hues pretty closely to uh, what was agreed to in the debt limit package uh, last spring. And so that does include some 886 billion in defense spending, additional 772 billion roughly for non-defense uh, spending. And again, kind of maintains those spending levels that were previously agreed to, which is significant because there was a lot of question, especially with Speaker Mike Johnson coming in, as to whether or not he would, you know, align with the agreement that former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy agreed to with the White House, obviously now with McCarthy no longer in Congress. Um, so uh, by maintaining those levels, the hope is that this takes some of the pressure off of these upcoming funding deadlines come January 19th and February 2nd when the government is due to run out of money. And, of course... It wouldn't be Congress if there wasn't pushback from some people. So there is a core group of Republicans that are not too happy about this. What's their complaint? Well, you know, this is a common uh, concern or gripe that some um, House Republicans continue to have as far as spending. I mean, they certainly want to see a deeper cuts. They really don't want to necessarily maintain the status quo, although Speaker Johnson, for his part, was able to get some additional uh, savings in unused COVID money, about $6 billion that will be recouped. And then a uh, $10 billion cut to uh, the IRS will be accelerated. But again, whether that's enough to quell uh, those more conservative House Republicans who would like to see a deeper spending cuts uh, remains to be seen. The other issue is that, you know, there are some differences when it comes to these appropriations bills, both in the House and the Senate. The appropriations bills in the Senate have all been approved or passed out of committee on a bipartisan basis. Over in the House, uh, many of these bills have some controversial uh, policy riders to them, if you will, uh, kind of these culture war amendments that we have seen House Republicans attach to other uh, big pieces of legislation. And Senate Democrats have made clear, look, if you try that, you know, <laughs> then uh, we're, we're not simply not going to put up with it. So uh, that is kind of one issue that still remains to be worked out and certainly one that that, you know, Speaker Johnson is going to have to negotiate carefully with his conference. Yeah, indeed. Nicole, thank you very much. You bet.